I'll speak to the, the finance part, like getting that secured in the next 12 to 24 months. All the experts are saying it. You've got, you know, the Ray Dalios of the world. You know, we're talking World War III you know, potential. There's things happening in the Middle East like that's affecting things globally that could have major impact. So there's macro economy that can affect your micro economy, your, your, your personal household, right? and those things are, are connected. Macro, you can't control, right? The, the global things that happen, you're not able to control those things. So I try to focus on what can I control today in my microeconomic economy in my household today? And that has to do with your four major numbers. If we can learn non-traditional financial concepts mm -hmm. that can benefit us in a very fast moving society world system today where there's 33 plus trillion dollars of debt and 160 plus trillion of unfunded liabilities if i can teach households how to leverage efficiently and effectively how to become better borrowers and stewards over capital resources we're going to be able to create a gap in that time when crisis does come so there's people watching right now that are already in a crisis i was like dude i'm already in my recession i'm already jobless i'm already you know, messing things up. And then there's people that are worried that you're watching, you're in a worried state of mind. You're like, I don't know if I'll have this job next year because the company is, is tanking. So a lot of you experience that, or you're like, I might get laid over, be, laid off because the, the company is going down. So for speaking of those people right now that have jobs and you're worried because you don't have an, uh, enough of a savings plan or emergency fund, expenses set to the side, that kind of a thing. A faster way to build up protection is to understand how to properly borrow. Mm. If you can learn how to properly borrow, reduce your interest costs of borrowing or potentially offset it completely, you could buy yourself more time in the event you do lose your job. Because here's the reality. The, the gurus over here that teach you to avoid debt like the plague and don't use debt and debt is bad and all that stuff. The reality is when you lose your job, and you have a home and car payments and student loan payments and overall bills and stuff, stuff has to get paid no matter what. So you lose your job and let's say you had maybe a couple couple grand in savings and you burn through it in two to three months. Now, now where do you pull from? Maybe you ask friends and family. Okay, so giving, gotcha, maybe that runs dry. What would be another option outside of not using debt? Outside of not using debt, you, you ask for help, People give money, maybe you have savings, and you burn through that, you still haven't recovered yet. Outside of debt, your only other option is maybe you had a 401k, 401k. right? So a lot of people will what? Borrow, but you're borrowing from yourself, right? Or maybe you do a liquidation of assets, right? So before we even borrow from the 401k, let's say you start selling things in, in your home, all right? So now you're getting rid of valuable things that you care about, you have your little garage sale, and maybe you get $1,000, $2,000, whatever it is. You burn through that. And now you have to borrow from where? Maybe you borrow from yourself because it's maybe at a cheaper rate, let's say, or you liquidate and sell more things. Now what else do you do, right? Outside of not borrowing debt, maybe you sell your house, maybe you sell a car, maybe you downsize, right? That could be a radical approach, a radical move that maybe didn't have to happen because that's a big decision to sell an asset of a car, let's say, or a property will what? Buy you time, what, six months? a year, whatever the case may be. So you're making a huge decision, a long-term decision in a, for a short-term gain. Whereas what if you could borrow from the banks, borrow from the institutions in a more efficient manner that could buy you the time that you need? Are you gonna pay interest? Yes. Do we pay less interest by doing velocity banking concept? Do we buy more time? Are we more efficient? And then when we do eventually bounce back, get that other job, get that promotion, start that business, things start rocking and rolling again, you know how to radically efficiently pay off that debt faster. And now it, it relieves stress in my opinion as well, where it's like I didn't have to sell the car because I need that for the kids and to get around work and be and be mobile. And I didn't have to sell the house. I was able to keep the house, not lose it. And that could be a long-term asset later on. That house could be a leverage tool, it, you know, leverage like a HELOC or something. So this is all tactical stuff that I believe are gonna prepare a lot of people when the inevitable does happen, where there's a recession, there's a crash, and you are now in a forced position where you have to borrow. So the difference between the person that's an educated borrower, the person that's not educated in borrowing, is they're gonna be left with the worst options. 
from those institutions. High interest credit cards, high interest personal loans with origination fees, payday loans, mm. AMSCOT, right? So you're gonna be left with the worst possible lending decisions rather than the person over here that borrowed at 0%. Maybe they were to get $100,000, $200,000 worth of capital at 0% or 4.99% or 5.99% simple interest. And they're doing velocity banking with whatever income they do have. Extends buys time. They didn't have to go into further debt than the person here that just strapped themselves to another 10 year, seven year, 15 year commitment on these different debts. Yeah. So that's that's just tactical stuff right there. You can speak to the to the heart of, of the people's situation but that's my, my tactical training right there. It's like, I would rather have the debt that I could use where like I can have debt, but not be in debt, if that makes sense. Like I can have access to $100,000, $250,000 worth of capital. I have access to debt, but I'm not in debt. So I'd rather have it, not need it, than, oh my goodness, I need it now. And now the banks don't wanna give it to me or they're willing to give it to me, but at a very, very high cost. Mm -hmm.